As an editor, what are you looking for from the reviewers? So most of the areas of science that I send out papers for review in, I'm not necessarily an expert in that exact area. So I'm looking for an objective evaluation of the science, the presentation of the science, the novelty of the science, how it fits in the greater context of the field, and if it's appropriate for the journal. Well, I mostly look to see the reviewer's unbiased and fair evaluation of scientific quality of the manuscript. When I'm looking at a review, the very first thing that I'd like to see is to see a very concise um, uh, description of what the paper brings to the field and what the possible impact of that paper would be in the context of the literature that's already published. And then I also like to know if they believe, if the reviewer believes that the general readership will find it of interest. Then after that, it's very important to have a thorough review of not just the technical scientific aspects of the paper, but also the presentation of the paper. Will it be readable to the general readership? Are the details there that are necessary for the reader to understand it in the context of the literature, but also um, to make it readable to, um, to the person, are, are the figures good, um, what is the actual content like. We look for wisdom and context. First, are the data correct? Uh, is what's presented important? Will it be of interest to our readers? Is there sufficient novelty? It takes a lot of work to be a referee. One has to uh, explore the literature, uh, not only know uh, what's in one's head, but look around for uh, what's been published recently, uh, what's been done in the past. And so we're really looking to the referees uh, to tell us where this paper, where this manuscript, it's not a paper until it's published, where this manuscript would fit in the field if we did publish it, and would it be of interest to our readers. We're not looking for an editorial decision, but rather uh, a description of the, of the work in the context of what's already been done. What would you like reviewers to do better? Probably respond more quickly, but we're all busy people, and one of the lessons I've learned is it's, it's really okay to say no when you get a request to review a paper, but what we tremendously appreciate is if you can suggest two or three other possibilities when you do that. What common mistakes do you see on the part of reviewers? So on the part of reviewers, I would say um, one of the more common mistakes would be to say, uh, make a statement such as, um, this has been shown previously, or um, it is common knowledge that, without actually giving the citation. Now, unless uh, the author and the editor have some special form of mind reading going on, uh, it's impossible for the uh, author or the editor to know which citation this person is talking about, why, um, why, they are, you know, why are they finding a fault with the paper based on that literature. So it's very important, I think, for the uh, reviewers when they do refer to literature to at least actually give the citation of that literature that they're referring to. That's possibly one of the most common problems. It will be much easier for everyone if, if uh, uh, reviewers uh, take that extra step. Um, secondly, I think um, that it's very important that the reviewer always uh, puts in the review not just opinions but validating their opinions with points from the paper and from the literature. So if there's something about the paper that is either incorrect or not well framed in the context of the literature, it's very important for the reviewer to be very specific about what is incorrect and why it's incorrect. Otherwise, again, it just seems like an opinion rather than something that can be substantiated by fact and then, then both the editor and the author is left in the dark. Most referees understand that what we're after is a description of the work and where that manuscript would fit in the field. Sometimes referees feel like they should be making editorial decisions for us, and that's not necessary. That's really the editor's job. 
I think referees should keep in mind that not only the senior author, but also students will be reading the uh, referee reports. So it's important to have constructive criticism of the work. Some reviewers lack appropriate reasoning and supporting information for their comments. Whether it is positive or negative comment, such kind of a review will, I think, uh, easily lead to confusion and disbelief to the authors. Authors will doubt the, the reviewer's evaluation is fair. Therefore, reviewers' detailed comments and supporting information are always critical. Two of the three referee reports recommended publication, yet the article was rejected. How can that happen? Well, everything is a matter of judgment, and you know we have check boxes for whether you think it's a minor revision, a major revision, or a rejection. But we tend to pay a whole lot more attention to what the reviewers have actually written than what box ends up getting checked. So you might have something that the reviewers feel even as good science, but as an editor, you may pick up things in there that suggest that this really isn't the right journal. Certainly an editor will typically try to explain why they're rejecting even when some of the recommendations are positive. Um, but we typically get far more submissions than we have the room to publish, and we have to make judgment calls about things like this quite commonly. While do you fully consider reviewers' comments, the editor has the right to make the final decision on the acceptance or rejection of the manuscript. I think in this case, it is highly likely that the manuscript is not suitable for publication. However, authors can always write a rebuttal request stating why the manuscript should be published.